I'm writing this to whoever is willing to listen. My name is Corporal James Kelly, and I'm a paratrooper in the United States military. Originally, the Allied forces were scheduled to attack the Nazis from multiple points in Normandy, France, on June 5th. Due to unfavorable weather conditions, the powers that be decided to wait until the next day. I joined the military to not only serve my country, but to also be the best person I could possibly be. To be honest, nervous is a complete and total understatement. But I had to find a way to keep calm, for my country's sake, and for the world's sake. June 6th, 1944, also known as D-Day. Before daybreak, our jump team landed and secured various points of exit and bridges in order to prevent the Nazis from escaping or receiving any support. After a few hours passed, the British, Canadian, and United States forces stormed various beachfronts, giving the Axis a lot more than just a headache. With what felt like an eternity later, we had a hold of the beaches and were armed with various supplies and support ready to fight our way across France. We lost so many brave, heroic souls throughout this time period. It's no wonder something horrible and unnatural was bound to happen. Nothing could have prepared us for the horrors that we would come across in the days to come. I was assigned to a larger group, ordered to travel through an area of marshlands in Normandy. The conditions were absolutely terrible. Trudging through the deep mud and pushing past the various dense array of wetland grasses and plants had given our group an unwavering feeling of homesickness and frustration. I can't wait to get home, announced a big mouth private. His name was Tim Wilson, a young man from Brooklyn, New York, trying to prove his manliness to his family back in the States. I'm going to be the greatest American hero he said, beating his chest. Shut your mouth, private. I said, annoyed. No one wants to hear your rambling. You want to go, Kelly? Wilson threatened. I could easily take you down. Save it for the enemy's boys. Sergeant Peterson interjected. Yes, Sergeant. Wilson said affirmatively. I agreed. Even though I would have loved to have thrown Wilson down, this was not the time or the place to lose our heads. After pushing through the soaked terrain for a long while, we found an area that wasn't too wet to set up camp. The area chosen was a small bank along a quietly flowing stream. The odd smells of the marsh filled the air and the calls of various species of wildlife sang their unique tunes. We'll lay low here for a few hours, men. Then at dawn, we'll move, announced Sergeant Peterson. We're projected to cross paths with an English company early tomorrow. We will join them and continue our way across France. Wilson, you're on watch duty. Yes, Sergeant, exclaimed Wilson. Seemingly displeased with the order, he dragged himself to his post as the rest of us tried to sleep for the short time we had. Little did we know it would change the course of our mission indefinitely. I awoke to the sound of gentle splashing coming from the stream near camp. It was still dark out, and no one seemed to be awake. My first thought was that Wilson was trying to find a way to keep himself awake. But then I peered out to his post. He was still sitting there, slumped. I quietly approached the motionless body, and then I saw his back rise and fall with a heavy breath. Oh, good, I thought. He's still alive. But then horror struck. I looked up the stream and saw a woman washing what looked to be clothing within the water. I grabbed my weapon and slowly made my way toward the woman. Her back was to me, so I couldn't make out any descriptive features, except for her long, tangled silver hair that shone in the moonlight. I crept closer. Then I called out, Excuse me, ma'am. She didn't even react. 
just focused on washing the clothing. We are in France, I thought to myself. Maybe she doesn't speak English. I did know a little French and German. Thanks to my grandparents who immigrated to the United States. I tried calling out again. Bonjour. Parlez-vous anglais? I waited a moment. Still, no response. Maybe German? I thought. Guten Tag. Sprechen Sie English? Again, nothing. I could hear Wilson stirring from his nap. Kelly? What are you doing? I heard him call out. Who is that? I turned toward Wilson. Keep your voice down. I muttered angrily. I just want to make sure that she's okay. I noticed the other soldiers in our group were already waking up. I turned back to where the woman was and made my way closer. But as I approached, something seemed wrong. The water was turning a faint red color. The clothing she was washing was soaked with what looked like blood. I was within arm's reach when I noticed the clothing she was washing was not only familiar, it was a United States military uniform. The woman flipped the stained article over, and that's when I saw it. The name tag. It read, Wilson. How is that possible? I asked myself. At that moment, the woman turned and faced me. She was hideous, grizzled, and old, with only one eye and a snaggle tooth. A sinister grin crept across her face and raised a gnarled, sickeningly thin finger to her lips. I felt like I couldn't look away. Ma'am, you have to move! I heard Wilson yell. A strange whistling flew past my head, followed by a loud thump. Sniper! One of the soldiers yelled. I turned to see Wilson, laying face down in the stream. Kelly, get down! The enemy must have found us. I quickly dropped to the ground and crawled to cover. I found a big enough tree to hide myself and tried to see if the woman in the stream was still there. To my surprise, she was gone. Shots were exchanged for what seemed like an eternity, but I couldn't shake that gruesome sight of that woman washing the uniform with Wilson's name on it. I glanced over to where Wilson's body lay. As annoying as he was, he didn't deserve to die like that. I swallowed my emotions and peeked from behind the tree, and a bullet whizzed past my head. I jerked myself back behind the tree. My heart felt like it was in my throat, and then a loud bang rung through the marsh. My ears started to ring as I covered them. How close was that? I whispered to myself. Not even a minute passed when I heard someone behind me say, Got him. I jumped up immediately, searching for the source of the voice within the dense grass behind me. Get down, soldier! The voice barked. I obeyed. Clearly the individual wanted me alive. I then noticed slight movements within the swaying grass, slowly coming towards me. It was a soldier, covered from head to toe in camouflage, crawling with his scoped rifle nestled in his hands. He made his way to the tree I was hiding behind and pushed his back against the trunk next to me. Sergeant Josh Miller, the unknown soldier said, extending his right hand. I'm with the British Army. A sense of relief washed over me as I shook his hand. I'm Corporal James Kelly, I exclaimed. I'm with the United States. Almost got yourself killed, Corporal, Miller said, almost sounding amused. I take it you're a part of the company we're supposed to be meeting up with, I asked. Miller nodded with affirmation. That's correct. We received intel that hostiles were making their way towards your location. Seems like we got here in the nick of time. Our men are sneaking around where we believe the hostiles are camping out. With that, we heard a pop, pop, pop 
in the distance, and then silence. All clear, someone yelled. The soldiers started emerging from their hiding places. Miller and I made our way over to where Wilson's body still lay. Poor guy, exclaimed Miller. Must have been caught off guard when the bullets started flying. I turned to Miller, fear gripping at my very being. We saw an old woman washing clothing in the stream before this all happened, I said. Miller had a look of almost disbelief on his face. And what did this woman look like, exactly? He asked, almost mockingly. You're not going to believe me, I said. But I proceeded to describe exactly what I saw. After I finished, Miller and the other soldiers chuckled at what I said. You've got one wild imagination, Miller laughed. Did your parents tell you stories of fairies too? I had no idea what he was talking about. What do you mean? I asked angrily. Miller's eyes met mine. You're describing a mythical creature known as the Ben Nye, a harbinger of death, also known as the Washerwoman. Miller, still grunting, slapped me on the back. It's all good, my friend. The stress of war makes people see really strange things. I smiled politely and tried to shake off the jokes and grins. I know what I saw. But maybe it was all in my head. But what wasn't imagined was the fact that Wilson was still dead. And we still had to keep moving. We can't take him with us. Peterson said solemnly, looking down at Wilson. We'll take his tags, but we have to go. We picked up camp and started moving out. What an odd experience. I still couldn't shake what had happened earlier in the day. We stayed together with the British soldiers for the next few days. They were definitely good company. Whether it be their jokes or stories, they knew how to keep the rest of us lively enough to continue pushing forward. On about the fourth day, a group came across a small river, meandering softly through the landscape. Well, let's spread out and secure the area, said Peterson. This seems like a good place to set up camp. Let us know if you see any washerwoman around, Kelly, Miller said, smiling, giving me a slap on the back. I just shook my head and smiled. I searched the area for any potential threats and came up empty. All clear, I called out. Peterson, we have an issue. I heard a soldier call out. I ran to the source of the call and came to a sudden halt. In the river was an old woman with her back to the soldiers, washing a large pile of US and British military uniforms. Maybe we should turn back now.